What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Game Nights. As always, this show is brought to you by Wizards of the Coast. Now, today, we're going to be playing with the cards from Time Spiral Remastered. Ooh. And we have NFL player Cassius Marsh in the house. You know, uh, Cassius, when he comes, he don't mess around. No, and we are definitely busting out the big guns for this episode. Really exciting. And you might want to join in on the fun, too. You can do so. Head on over to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. Time Spiral Remastered is an amazingly cool set because they've got all of these new cards in old frames. It's a redo of this amazing draft set that people love. It's the perfect time to pick up some of these cards, whether or not you're looking for that limited experience or you want to power up your deck and with some awesome bling. Yeah, those retro frames are so, so sweet. Cardkingdom.com slash command zone. You're going to buy magic cards anyway. May as well support Game Night's Extra Turns, our podcast while you're at it. And the other way to support all of our content is directly if you go to patreon.com slash command zone. All kinds of cool perks for our patrons. You get to chat with Jimmy and I on our Discord every single day we're on there. You also mm -hmm. get early access to extra turns and game nights. We say it every time, but it's true. If you're a patron, you're probably not watching us right now because you saw this episode yesterday before anybody else in the world could see it. We love our patrons to death. They are the backbone of this show. And of course, for everyone else out there, make sure you stick around to the end of the episode because we've got tons of giveaways to give to you, our loyal viewers. Yeah, lots of ultra pro swag mm -hmm. to give away. All right, Jimmy, it's time... Get it? Oh, yep, I get it. Time spot. Okay, yeah. It, it, we're going to play some magic now, and you will enjoy it. How's it, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Game Nights. On this one, we have two of your favorite guests returning. Hey, everyone, it's Ashlyn Rose, and you may know me from my live play D&D shows like Ravnica the Broken Pack or Dissex Machina on Saving Throw Show. But today, I'm here to throw down on Game Nights. And whether it's a battlefield or a football field, it's the most competitive player we know. What's going on, everybody? Cassius Marsh here, seven-year NFL vet, but one really excited thing is I'm now a trading card shop owner. The name of the shop is Cash Cards Unlimited. I'm super psyched. This has been a lifelong dream for me, but I gotta stay focused. I'm here on game nights, and I built a really powerful deck. I'm here to get this W. Cassius always brings the heat, so we're building some high-powered EDH decks using commanders from Time Spiral Remastered. It's a classic block from Magic's history, but the best of it was all taken and pared down to a single set. There's a lot of cool complexity, a lot of reprinted staples from the format. The old school borders on the new school cards, I absolutely love it. Wizards did a great job with this set. I'm buying tons of it. So the commander I'm playing today is Kervak the Merciless. My deck is all about throwing around lots and lots of damage. Plus, I have a bunch of other effects to amplify and increase all of that damage. So I can pick off all my opponent's creatures, burn their face, and win the game. So today, the commander I built is Tassiger the Golden Fang. Tassiger is a really cool commander because you can kind of choose any direction you want to go with it. So my deck is packed with the most powerful cards in the format. Just really efficient, brutal stuff. So I'm gonna control my opponents and hopefully assemble a combo win. The deck I'm playing today is Rada, heir to Keld. Yeah, you should run. My commander gives me a bunch of mana, especially when she's attacking in combat, but I have to use it at instant speed. It's jam-packed with value to keep up with my opponents and finish the table off with some of my biggest monsters. Who doesn't love a big red-green monster mash? So the deck I built is Joyra of the Gitu. So this deck is all about taking advantage of Joyra's ability. I'm gonna get some big, huge CMC Haymaker-style cards, and then manipulate the counters on them to sneak them into play very early. But I also have a bunch of control elements to keep my opponents at bay until all my scary stuff comes out. Okay, let's battle. All right, let's play. Let's do this. It's time to fight. <laughs> Well, it looks like everyone here has already been on the show before, so we don't have any nighting to do. Let's just get playing. Oh, hold on, hold on. We forgot something. Welcome to Game Nights, oh, everyone. Yeah. And only one may stand. Everybody ready? 
Yep. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Okay, I will draw for turn, and I will play an island. That's it. I will pass the turn. Go ahead, Ashlyn. All right, I too will draw for turn, and I will play a Spine Rock Knoll ah. tapped, and then I will do the hideaway thing. Nice. This card's great for my deck because for me to activate it, someone has to take seven damage to the face. But with my commander, that actually looks like it's gonna be pretty likely to happen. Okay, I'm gonna look at the top four cards of my library and I'm gonna choose one of them. And I'm gonna put that here and the rest will go on the bottom of my library. And that's it for me, I'll pass. Okay, I will go to untap and draw my card for turn. Uh, I will play a Misty Rainforest and I will pass turn to you, Cash. Okay, I will draw for turn. I will play Morphic Pool, tap that Morphic Pool and play a Mystic Remore. Oh no. I don't like that at all right now. <laughs> just playing magic, just playing magic. This has gotta be one of the best turn one plays you can have out of any deck because in the early games, players are usually developing their boards, which basically means trying to get more mana on the table. That's almost always non-creature spells. Cassius is probably gonna draw a lot of cards off this. So I'm the last player in turn order, so having this Mystic Remora on turn one is huge for me. It'll help me catch back up to the rest of the table. I will pass my turn. Okay. I will draw. I'm gonna play a mountain. All right, well, I'm gonna tap two. I'm gonna play a talisman of creativity. And that triggers Mystic Remora. Yeah, I don't have four mana, so you can draw. Sweet. I don't want Cassius to draw the card, but I really can't afford to not develop my board. I'm gonna need all the mana I can get to keep up in this game, so I just gotta bite the bullet, let him draw. Stupid Mystic Remora. I drew a one drop non-creature oh. that I could play. <laughs> Because I know what I'm doing next turn, which is playing my commander, so am I not playing this card for two turns? It just depends if you're gonna use that one man for something else next turn. I'm not gonna use the thing for a little while, so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hold off. Okay, yeah. good right. choice. Yeah, all right, then I will pass the turn, I guess. Okay, great. I'm going to untap from my turn and draw my card. Okay, I'll play a swamp. Let's see, I'm gonna tap this and play Scheming Symmetry. Okay. Who would like to tutor with me? Who do you choose, right? I get to choose two players. Ooh. Tutoring is one of the most powerful things you can do in magic, but everything comes with a price. So maybe I can get another player to feel like they owe me something. Okay, well, while you're deciding Mr. Grimora triggers, do you have four mana? No. I will draw a card. Okay, well, just in case you choose me, because this is to the top of the library, I'm gonna crack my Misty Rainforest right now, go into 39, and get a stomping ground on the battlefield tapped. Nice. I mean, I will say I had a play and I tried for the betterment of all to not do it, so, you know, I feel like I've gained a little bit of hopefully goodwill I from you. I will say, if you choose me, I can get rid of Mystic Remora and Talisman of Dominance. So. Oh, gosh, okay. Okay, I think at the table, I'm probably the best person to choose for this, right? Josh Lee Kwai, we know how dangerous he can get, and Cassius, well, he's already scary, so I don't think we should be helping him at all. So, if you can deal with the Mystic Remora, mm -hmm. Jimmy, mm -hmm. Uh, I will let you tutor. <gasps> I'll do that. I'll take that. Okay, so Jimmy and I are both gonna search our library for a card. Mm -hmm. And we'll put those cards on top of our decks. Oh, wow. come on. Okay, so Ashlyn picks Jimmy as her tutor partner. I'm feeling pretty bad at this point. Cassius has drawn extra cards because of that Mystic Remora. And now Jimmy and Ashlyn have just gone and found the best cards in their deck, I guess. Which basically puts me, well, behind. And that's all I got, so Jimmy, go. Okay, I'm gonna untap, and I'm gonna draw the card I tutored for. So I will play in Arid Mesa. I'm going to crack it immediately, losing a life, and going to 38. Finding a Taiga, putting it onto the battlefield. And unfortunately, I have to do this because we've decided that it is okay to do. So I'm gonna tap two, and I'm gonna cast three visits. Cool. I'm gonna find a forest. Put it onto the battlefield untapped and shuffle my library. Cassius, I do not have the mana for Mystic Remora. So that means... It will trigger and I will draw. I don't love giving Cassius another card here, but I can't not ramp on turn two, especially in a green deck. And if that means Cassius gets one more card right now, so be it. What? That's not Mystic Remora removal. He just drew a card. Hello, Jimmy. Oh, I thought he was saying, unfortunately, I have to do this, which is destroy Mr. Cremora. I know, I'm like, wait, this that. doesn't do that. If you, if, you, if you have not noticed, green typically takes three mana to do things to destroy. Is it Rex Age? Uh, it could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'm gonna pass turn to you, Cash. Okay, so I will untap. Cumulative upkeep trigger on my Mystic Remora. I will not pay that. 
Whoa. Okay. One mana. I got three cards. Yeah, I'm happy with it. I'm not going to pay the accumulative upkeep. I'm going to let it go to the graveyard. I will draw a card. I will play a Undergrowth Stadium. I will tap one to play Soul Ring. Seems good. And then I will tap the Soul Ring and Undergrowth Stadium to play a Sylvan Library. Well, that's not good. Yeah, so Cash is off to a really good start in this game. Gets ramp, more card draw. We already know that he loves to play really powerful cards, really powerful decks. All of this stuff is making me nervous already. Okay, I will untap. I will draw. All right, I am going to play a Volcanic Island. And then I'm gonna tap three. I will play my commander, Joira of the Gitu. Hey. Yep. Oh great, she's here. This commander gets really scary really fast. I am not looking forward to seeing what Josh is gonna suspend with her. It might be something crazy like an Eldrazi. They wouldn't do that to me, right? Well, I'm gonna pass the turn. All right, I'm gonna untap and I will draw the card I tutored for. And then I'm going to tap all the things and play a Phyrexian Arena. Nice. Is that what you tutored for? Yeah. <laughs> I love this card. It's gonna help set up my future turns and give me incremental value every single turn. I'm on the board now and ready to catch up to everyone else. And I will pass turn, go ahead, Jimmy. Okay, I'm gonna untap, I will draw for turn. Okay, um, I'm going to tap two mana and I'm gonna cast my commander, Rada, heir to Keld. All right, who's next? Noise. My deck is built around the two red mana that my commander generates whenever she attacks. But because it's not during a main phase, I have to find creative ways to use that at instant speed. So the most important thing for me right now is just to play her and hope she survives. And unfortunately, that's all I can do this turn, so I'll pass to you, Cassius. Okay, untap. Sylvan Library will trigger, so I'll draw my top three cards. I'm not gonna pay any life, so I'll put two back. Then I will play a Windswept Heath, and I will crack the Windswept Heath, find a tropical island, and lose one life. So Cassius is really showing the power of shuffle effects plus knowledge of the top of your library here. He looks at his cards, obviously didn't like a lot of them because he only took one. He could have taken more and paid the life. And now he gets to shuffle them away and look at a new three cards next turn. So a lot of value here just from a fetch land. And then I'll tap four and I'll play Narset Part of Veils. You have no power here. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's bad. Oh, I really don't like seeing this card. Narset is powerful because of her static ability, which basically means that Jimmy, Ashlyn, and I aren't allowed to draw extra cards. That doesn't seem so bad, but there's a lot of effects that Cassius could pair this with when he untaps on his next turn, stuff like wheel effects, that would immediately mean that the rest of us have no cards in our hand. And that makes me pretty nervous. So I will tap for one green and play a lot of where else. Oh, okay. okay. All right, that's all I got. Josh, I'll pass the turn to you. Wait, wait, you you're not gonna activate? Turn? Nope, I will pass my turn. He's that makes me scared, because then he's like really wants her for his follow-up windfall play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that. So Cassius passes the turn here, and he doesn't even activate his Narset. Which means that he's more concerned with keeping it on the battlefield than he is with getting extra cards with her. That makes me pretty scared. He's got some kind of plan. And that plan probably involves all of his opponents not having any cards in their hand. Ah, uh, we really need to be ready to find an answer to this Narset. Get it off the table, it's just too scary. Whenever you see Narset, you're just thinking, oh, please don't wheel. <laughs> we'll have no cards in hand. I mean, we can both swing with our tutus, which will get in at it, but it's gonna be around for one more turn unless. Yeah. Not much I can do about it, so I am going to untap, and then I will draw for turn. Okay, I'm gonna play a Blast Zone. Comes in with one counter on it. Nice. All right, I'm gonna tap three. Okay. And then I'm gonna play a slightly sad Yo. Rhystic Study. Oh. That is... Very nice. It's really? still good, because I can draw one on yours and one on yours. Right, and right, one on right. Yours. So Rhystic Study uh, is actually pretty good in this situation for Josh, because Narset allows everybody to draw one card on each player's turn. It'll slow him down still, but he's still able to get some card advantage. I don't like seeing this right now. Uh, and then I'm going to go to combat, and I don't like Narset much, so Joira is going to swing for two at Narset. I'm not going to block. Narset will go to three loyalty. Which does not take her out, unfortunately. Uh, no. Uh, and then that's going to do it for me. Go ahead, Ashlyn. All right, I'm going to untap all of my lands and then upkeep Frexian Arena trigger. 
I'll go to 39 and I will draw a card. But I will not draw a card for my turn because of Narset. Ouch. Sucks. Sorry guys. That totally sucks. Sorry. Well that's just great. This card shuts off my Phyrexian Arena. At this point, I thought I'd be able to at least keep up with everyone in the card draw shenanigans, but now I feel like I'm falling behind. Cassius, that's rude, bro. Okay, well, I'm going to play a Seer Step Pathway, and then I'm going to tap everything, and I'm going to play Chandra Torch of Defiance. Oh, more Planeswalkers. Let's light it up. Wow. Jeez Louise. This card is so good and can do a lot of things, but what I care most importantly about right now is the impulsive card draw. Chandra exiles cards and you can play them this turn. So technically, I'm not drawing. Rhystic study trigger, would you like to pay the one? Nope. Okay, I will draw. And then I'm going to plus one Chandra, choosing to exile the top card of my library, which is a Talisman of Indulgence. I can't play it, so Chandra will do two damage to each of my opponents. Uh, okay, I'll go to 36. I will go to 37. And I will go to 38. All right, and that is my turn. Go ahead, Jimmy. Okay, I'm going to untap. I'll draw for turn. And then I'm going to tap three mana, and I'm going to cast Jessica's Will. Good card, I heard. Great card. Jessica's Will has got to be one of the best red cards to come out in a long time. Jimmy's going to get a ton of mana here. He's going to get cards to cast with the mana. This card is unbelievable. On cast, since it's important, do you want to pay for the Rhystic Study? I cannot, so you can draw a card. Okay. So, because I control my commander, I'm going to add red for each card in target opponent's hand. So I'm going to choose you, Josh. Yep, and I now have seven because of the Rhystic Study. <laughs> and then I'm gonna exile the top three cards in my library. I may play them this turn. I'm really, really hoping for a land drop right now because I only have Enters the Battlefield tapped lands in my hand. But three cards off the top of my library and a ton of mana, oh, this could get spicy. And I'll reveal one, two, three. That's not bad. So it's Apex Devastator, Tireless Tracker, and Nyeth of the Dire Hunt. Oh, this is not great. All that mana I just made is red, and the cards I just flipped are all green. Not to mention, I didn't find a single land. Oh, this couldn't have gone worse. Okay, so I have seven red mana floating. With four of it, I'm gonna cast Vidalcan Orrery. Seems good. Yeah, so Vidalcanori, I mean, it's always something that you have to take into account. It allows him to react to the rest of the table rather than just playing out his turn. So uh, it keeps him flexible. Okay, so trigger Rhystic Study. I think in response to the Rhystic Study trigger, I'm gonna tap for a blue and I'm gonna cast Chain of Vapor targeting Narset. Ah. So it gets bounced? Bounced. Narset is back in your hand. Sweet. Cash. You do have the choice to sacrifice a land and cast Chain of Vapor yourself. Do you wanna do that? Mm, nope. Okay. And now the Rhystic Study trigger is still on the stack. Jimmy, do you wanna pay? Uh, I will not pay. Okay, I will draw. So I'm bouncing Narset now because if she's not on the table, I can draw another card if Jimmy doesn't pay for Rhystic Study. Also, I was gonna make this play anyway. I was just waiting to see if Ashlyn or Jimmy would get rid of her instead, but it looks like he's not gonna do that, so I might as well do it now. Okay, so I have three red left. I'm gonna use two of that red and a green, and I'm gonna cast Tireless Tracker. <sighs> Sweet. Every single time I play a land, Tireless Tracker gives me a clue. How much does that clue cost to sacrifice? Two mana. How much mana does my commander make when she attacks? You got it. So that means no wasted mana and tons of value. Rhystic Study trigger? I'm gonna use the last red mana I have floating to pay for the Rhystic Study. Okay. And then I am going to, for my land for turn, play Balagid Sanctuary, which enters the battlefield tapped. And that will trigger the Tireless Tracker. And that's gonna get me a clue token. And then I'm going to combat. Ashlyn, I'm not gonna swing at your Chandra, so I hope you don't point her at me anytime soon. But I am going to, because you're at the highest life total, just attack you for two. Seems fair. When Rada attacks, I add two red to my mana pool. I'm going to immediately use that two red to crack my clue and draw a card. That's pretty cool. And that's gonna put a plus one, plus one counter on Tireless Tracker. So it's a four, three? Yep. And then with that, uh, blockers. I have no blockers, so I will take two damage. Going to 37. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do this turn. Jessica's Will's cards are gonna remain exiled and I'll pass the turn to you, Cassius. Okay, I will untap 
And then because of Sylvan Library, I will draw the top three cards. So I'm not gonna pay and I will put two cards back. Just drawing one again? Just drawing one. Slumming it with the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna play a Maze of Ith. Yeah, so much for being able to knock out the Narset now. And I'm just going to replay Narset. You have no power here. Ugh. Ristic Study Trigger, you wanna play the one? I will play the one with Soul Ring. All right, that's it. I will pass my turn. Look, we really need to get rid of Narset. Can either of you handle that? Because I'm just worried about what he does if he untaps with enough mana. I think cast we'll be fine. fine. Yeah, I don't think he's gonna do that. What, why wouldn't you think he would do that? He's Cassius. <laughs> <laughs> so like, alarm bells are just going off in my head. What happened this turn? Cassius played the exact same card he played last turn. He played another piece of protection in it for that maze of it. And again, he did not even activate her. This is like a huge sign that's saying, I am going to wheel in some way next turn and make you lose all the cards in your hand. It's gonna suck and you're not gonna like it at all. And will you please help me destroy Narset, everybody? Scary over there. It's scary everywhere. You're clearly setting Narset up for something though. I mean, both it's... turns the same thing happens, which is scary to me. Okay, I will untap and I will draw. Um, my attacking Joyra, that's what she's in the deck for. <laughs> we'll continue, I'll go to combat. I'll swing at Narset for two. I will have no blockers. Narset will go to three loyalty. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna tap two and I'm gonna play Mind Stone. Mm-hmm. Yep. And uh, that's all I'm gonna do. Go ahead, Ash. Oh, a lot right. of untapped mana, though. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of untapped mana. <laughs> Listen, I'm gonna say right now that I don't have a real good answer for what I think Cassius is gonna do. However, if I just have all my mana open, I'm hoping he'll be hesitant to try it. That's the only hope I have right now, except for Ashlyn or Jimmy, please, destroying the Narset. During my upkeep, I'm going to take a damage from Phyrexian Arena. Putting me at 36, and then I will draw a card. So nice. And then I won't draw a card for turn. Thank you, Cassius. Anytime. That Narset, it's a menace. I'm gonna play an Urberg. Urberg, we all have swarm. So I'm thinking about playing my commander here, because then all anyone needs to do is play a three CMC card, and I can get rid of Narset. But I'm pretty happy with what I drew this turn, so I think I'm gonna play something else. All right, so I think I know what I'm gonna do. Okay. I'm gonna set myself up a little bit. I'm going to plus one Chandra. But this time I'm going to use her second plus one to give myself two red mana. So I now have six mana in my mana pool and I will cast Fiery Emancipation. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. I mean, this card is, is, is super scary. In particular, with her commander, I mean, this this card can easily take over a game, turn five damage into 15 damage, 10 damage, 30. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. So this is a really powerful card. Triples all the damage that Ashlyn's gonna do, but it doesn't do anything right now and it doesn't kill the Narset. So what damage are you gonna be tripling when you have no cards in your hand? I just don't like this play at all. I think this is gonna go south. Uh, on that cast, Rustic Study. I'll pay the one. Okay. And that's my turn, I'll pass. Um, I will untap. I'll draw for turn. Uh, I will play my land for turn. It is Valakut Stoneforge. That's gonna trigger Tireless Tracker. I'll get a clue token. Sweet. Um, I'll go to combat. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and swing at Chandra for two. Seriously? I don't know why Jimmy's attacking Chandra here. There's still a Narset on the board and I'm pretty sure that's the problem. Here's the thing. I could attack Narset on Cassius' board, but he has a Maze of Ith out and I can only get two damage in, so it goes from three loyalty to one. It's still not dead. Meanwhile, that Chandra on Ashland's board is ticking closer and closer to its ultimate. And if that happens with Fiery Emancipation out, we're all done for. So I'm gonna take care of that and just hope that Cassius plays nice. On attack, Rod is gonna add two mana. And because of Vidalkan Orrery, I can cast spells at flash speed, so I will flash out Sunset Pyramid. That's not bad. It's gonna enter the battlefield with three counters on it. And then I'm going to pay the one for a six study. Okay. And then I have no blockers, so Chandra will go down to four loyalty counters. Okay. Uh, and that's gonna do it for me for this turn. Uh, pass the turn. All right, untap. Okay, well, Cassius is untapping. Still has his Narset. I have no way to get rid of her, so now I'm just crossing my fingers and hoping I'm wrong. I hope he doesn't have a wheel effect. Sylvan Library trigger, I will draw top three cards. Don't draw the windfall, please. He drew the windfall. I mean, we'll see. I'm if gonna... he did, I tried to warn y'all. I'm gonna keep two cards, so I will take four damage. Going to 33. Yep. That scares me. I hope we're not teaming no cards over here. 
I don't like that face at all. All right, I will attempt to play a time twister. A time twister. Oh. I told you guys. So this time twister is gonna be huge for me. I'm gonna draw the seven cards, but my opponents will not. They'll all end up with only one card. Yeah, this is gonna be devastating. Oh no! I underestimated caches. This is bad. Why didn't anyone say anything about this? I yeah, said, yeah, I said, 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 I said a million times. You guys didn't listen. I said it I over and over. I couldn't do anything. I it was can't a topic. Didn't, like... didn't even swing at her. 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 You could play Karavik. We could have killed her. I said, I said, I said, I said, I said. No one listened. I told you so. 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 I don't want to say I told you so, but I told you so. Definitely not complaining. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. I had to do it. I top decked it. It's like, how do you not do you that? You don't top deck when you have Sylvan Library. That's no such thing. You chose it out of a bunch of cards. Josh, look, I know things look really bad right now, and they kind of are, but I really wanted to triple my damage. Sorry, not sorry. Uh, okay, so before we decide if we have any responses, there's a Rhystic Study Trigger on cast. Do you want to pay the one? Uh, I do. Okay. I will tap Alchemist Refuge. Uh, I mean, it's just bad. I, I have no way to stop this, and I'm the blue deck. I'm the only one that really has a, a chance to even stop something like a Time Twister. It's gonna happen. We're, we're gonna end up with, like, no cards in our hand. Yay. Josh, can you stop this? Nope. Okay. Ashlyn, any responses? Mm, nope. Okay, well, if I'm gonna get rid of my hand, I may as well play the card that I tutored for way back in the game and at least do some damage on the way out because Cassius is gonna be in a super powerful position after this. I guess I will try and do this and see what happens. And if, if you're all passing priority, I'm gonna tap four. I'm gonna cast Force of Vigor, do some damage on the board. I'm gonna target Sylvan Library and Fiery Emancipation. Oof. So this makes a lot of sense, but I spent my entire last turn playing this card, so I don't have a lot to show for anything right now, and I'm not feeling great. Okay, on that cast, there's a Rhystic Study Trigger. Yes. Do you want to pay the one? No, draw a counter spell, please. It was not a counter spell. So I don't really want the Fiery Emancipation to stick around, but it's gonna be three versus one after this, so I need to have the Sylvan Library. So Jimmy's Force of Vigor, I, I don't think I can let it happen. In response, I'm going to Swan Song. Your force of vigor. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I can't even get rid of anything on Cassius's board. Of course he has the answer. He drew a thousand cards this game. Uh, first thing on that cast, Rhystic Study Trigger, are you gonna pay the one? I will not because you cannot draw. That is true. Well then I will go to draw the card and Narset will stop me. That's exactly right. All right, well, wait a minute, wait a minute here. I said I didn't have an answer in my hand, but Cash is going to counter somebody else's spell I think it might have opened a little doorway here. I might be able to stop this. In response to your response, uh -huh. this opened up a pathway for me oh. to oh. save us. You're welcome. Will you listen to me from now on, please? <laughs> Deflecting SWAT. <laughs> targeting Swan Song. Ah, targeting the Time Twister. Time Twister. Ooh. Wow. Oh, snap. What? Out of the blue, that's insane. What an interesting interaction. So what I'm able to do here is take Cash's counter spell and use it to counter the time twister, which means we're all gonna keep the cards in our hand. Let's resolve the stack here. Deflective Swat resolves? Yes. Okay, so now Swan Song is targeting the time twister. Okay. Swan Song now resolves. Cassius gets a bird. Wow. Cassius kind of just shot himself in the foot here. Hope he doesn't get too upset. Great, I have an enemy for the rest of the game now. Spicy! Oh, I'm sorry that I stopped you from making us discard our hands. Yeah, me too. Ew. And yeah. now Force of Vigor resolves. Force of Vigor resolves. Sylvan Library and Fire Emancipation get destroyed. Come on. Oh, we all have cards. <sighs> that was a really close one. Good job, Josh. Not that Ashlyn or Jimmy are gonna say thank you or anything. I'm super salty at this point. I got greedy here. I should have let the Sylvan Library go away. Josh had already said he didn't have an answer and all I did was give him one. What was that story about flying too close to the sun? Yeah, Cassius just did that. Cool. I will minus two Narset. Look at the top four. I'll put these three on the bottom of my library and I'll reveal Omniscience. 
Oh boy, yikes. Oh, this is one of the best cards in the game. Oh man, just when I thought we were out of trouble. So this card is really scary, but right now it's in Cash's hand. We have some time to hopefully find an answer for it. And plus, my commander likes high CMC cards, so we'll worry about that when it gets here. Well, you know, one problem at a time, everybody. All right, I'm done, past turn. All right, on your end step, I'm going to tap four, and I'm gonna put two counters onto the blast zone. So it has three counters on it now. And then I will untap for turn, and I will draw. And then I'm going to tap two. I'm gonna play Jace Vren's Prodigy. Okay. So far this game, I've not been able to get my main plan online. I'm hoping Jace can let me start cycling through my deck so I can find some of my big stuff, start suspending it, and getting some, you know, haymakers into play. I can't even swing it in our set. There's a bird. Oh. <laughs> to be fair, I'm happy with that bird for helping us out earlier, so that's all I can do. Go ahead, Ashlyn. All right. I will uh, untap everything for my turn. Prexian Arena will deal a damage to me, putting me at 35. I will draw a card from it and not draw a card for turn. Um, I'm going to activate Chandra using her second plus one. So you have two red mana? Two red mana okay. from Chandra. Okay. And then I will tap out again to cast my commander, Karabak the Merciless. Sweet. All right, my commander is here. I'm super excited for him to come out and play because now we can really get some damage thrown around. But I got a little bit of politics I want to try and employ. And so I have a deal for the table. Oh. <laughs> uh, hold on, before you make that deal, there's a Rhystic Seti trigger. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot pay the one. Okay, I will draw. So, Caravac, the Merciless. Mm -hmm. My deal for the table is I will let you choose what that target is when you cast a spell, as long as it is not me or any of my permanents. Interesting. So Ashlyn, she basically says, if you cast a spell, she'll let you decide where that damage goes. You know, as long as you don't try to blow up any of her stuff. She doesn't actually ask anything in return for this deal, so I see no reason not to take it. I will take such deal. There seems to be no downside for me for this deal, so I'll take it. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it for sure. There's no cost, right? I think this is actually a really clever way to sort of make us feel like we're in power. She may be doing this to deflect blame, but we all know it's her card. It's her fault. And that's my turn. Go ahead, Jimmy. All right, I'm going to untap. I'll draw for turn. Um, I'm going to tap two mana and play Sensei's Divining Top. Nice. Immediately paying for Ristic Study. I was like, it only costs one, Jimmy, but then I knew why you were doing it. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> um, since you cast a spell, Caravac will trigger. Uh, I'm actually going to put this one back in your hands because one damage I feel like goes one place. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, we'll just get rid of Narset. Narset will be gone. Narsa did a lot of work. She did. I can now draw. She's gone! My Phyrexia Arena is finally online! I will finally get to draw two cards per turn! <gasps> I'm so happy. I'm going to tap one green to activate the top. I'll put it back on top like that. Josh, you're not gonna block if I hit you for two, right? No, I am not. Okay, I'm gonna go to combat. Josh, I'm gonna swing at you with Rada, air the Keld for two. Okay, I have no blocks. Okay, uh, with the extra mana, I'm going to sacrifice this clue. Draw a card, and that's gonna put a counter on the tireless tracker. Yep, and then I will take two. I will go to 36. Uh, and then on my second main phase, I'm gonna play Castle Garen Brig. Uh, when that enters the battlefield, I'll make another clue token. And then, with that, I will pass turn. Good old Vidalcan I'm so jealous. I will untap my lands and draw it. I will play a Overgrown Tomb, untapped, going to 31. Lots of manas. So at this point, Caravac is now on the board, and this thing's just way too scary. I don't want it to stick around. I will play a Toxic Deluge. Oh! Come on! For four. Oh, this is a setback for the entire table. It's exactly what Cassius needs, which is just a little more time. Oh, this is not great. I don't want my commander going back to the command zone because he costs seven mana. So that sucks. Boy, what a nice day for a sojourn. Wait, what's this rift thing? Venzer, I've time spiraled back to bring you dire warnings. Who are you? I'm you from the future. Me? What? Why are you wearing that crazy helmet? Because in the future, I, uh, you, 
Well, we lose our hair. What? But it's not too late to change things. You can stop your hair loss in its tracks using Keeps, the simple stress-free way to keep your hair. Treatments start at just $10 a month, and you can schedule appointments online so you don't have to deal with awkward doctor visits. But heed my warning. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so you must begin using Keeps now. The sooner you start, the more hair you'll save. Please pass me. Save your, our hair, and save the future! If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash nights to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash nights, that's nights with a K, to get your first month free. Again, keeps.com slash nights. Oh, and I almost forgot. We're, we're also gonna die. Wait, what? Elaborate on that. No time. Rift closing. Use Keeps! Hi everyone, before we get back into the show, I wanted to tell you about something that's deeply important to me personally. The pandemic has been really tough for everyone, but lately it's gone particularly bad for our Asian communities. We've seen a huge rise in anti-Asian hate crimes and discrimination from innocent people being attacked in broad daylight to our businesses and cultural centers being vandalized and robbed. I'm hoping that together, we can stem the tide of hate and begin the healing process. That's why I'm partnering with EarnCheese.com as their chief community ambassador. The Cheese debit card offers a chance to lend a hand to the Asian community and every single one of you watching can help. All you have to do is sign up. From now until June 10th, Cheese is pledging $100,000 to our Give Back Fund, which is dedicated to getting much needed aid to Asian focused charities and nonprofits. Signing up is free, only takes a few minutes, and when you do, we automatically donate $10 to the fund. On top of that, you'll get five free dollars in your account right away just for taking part. Plus, you can earn up to 10% cash back at over 10,000 vendors across the nation, including tons of Asian owned businesses. So head on over to earncheese.com right now, sign up for free. Help us contribute to a great cause and get $5 in your account immediately. Again, that's earncheese.com. I'll see you there. I will play a Toxic Deluge. Oh, what's X equal to? Four. Oh no. Okay. And you're gonna lose four life cash. Yeah, so it's nice to kill all the creatures, but Karavik is really what I wanna get. This thing's just way too scary. I don't want it to stick around. Okay, so with that on the stack, Ristic Study, do you want to pay the one? I do want to pay the one. Okay, so I don't draw the card. Uh. Karavik trigger on the stack. Where do you want to point that three? I would like to target Josh. Okay, so I take three from Karavik. So I go to 33. In response, I am going to pay two mana and activate this clue. Draw a card. And Tireless Strike is gonna get another plus one, plus one counter. And so it becomes a six five, so it's gonna live. That's pretty cool. I am not happy with this. I probably should have Toxic Deluge for five. He's gonna keep the Tireless Tracker, but whatever. Then Toxic Deluge resolves and everything except Tireless Tracker dies. Yep. Uh. I will put Joyer in the command zone. I will put Rada in the command zone. I will put Karabek in the graveyard. Ooh, black reanimation tricky, and again. Tricky, tricky. Interesting. I like it. I like it. Okay, I will then cast Tassiker. Not bad. I'll double away five cards. So he costs one black? So he costs one black. Ooh. That seems pretty good. I know it doesn't look like much, but because of Delve, Cash is able to only leave the important cards in his graveyard, giving his opponent nothing but bad choices. And I noticed that the Time Twister is still in there. Also, if he ever gets a ton of mana, he can just activate Tassiker a bunch of times and really get a lot of value. Risk study trigger? No, I will not pay. I will draw one. I'll pass my turn. Okay, on your end step, I'm going to tap four. I'm gonna play clock spinning with buyback. Oh. And I'm going to remove a counter from the tireless tracker. No, it's gonna die! Nice. Um, shoot. Well, in response, I guess I'm gonna tap two. And I'll use my sunset pyramid to remove a brick counter and draw a card. And tireless tracker is gonna go kapoof. Not bad at all. Clock spinning will go back to my hand because of the buyback. Josh is making me nervous now. This card in a suspend deck is terrifying because he can just take counters off his suspend things and get them even sooner. And he paid the buyback for it, so it's in his hand now. We're all gonna have to keep an eye on Josh because now he's getting set up. And then I will untap for turn. And then I will draw. Okay, I'm gonna tap five and I'm going to play my commander out of the command zone again. Jura, she's back. 
Yay. It's big time stuff right there. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't feel great to be recasting my commander at this point in the game. She's really supposed to suspend some stuff early and that stuff should be coming into play by now. But even though I've drawn a ton of cards with that Rhystic study, I just haven't drawn any of my really big powerful stuff. So I'm feeling a little behind now. All right, that's all I could do. Go ahead, Ashlyn. On your end step, I will tap for three and play a whole breacher. Your loss, my gain. Oh, oh Ashlyn, your Brexian arena still is turned off. Come on. <laughs> Just when I thought I could draw cards again, it's not gonna happen. So there's two bad things about this card. One is, it doesn't allow me to draw stuff with Rhystic Study like Narset did, because it doesn't even allow the one card on everybody's turn. It just says if it's not your draw step, you don't draw. But also it gives Cassius treasure, and we know he's got omniscience in his hand. So if he just gets like three or four treasure, this could get real bad. So I just don't think I can let it happen. So I am gonna tap two, and I'm gonna mana drain the whole Breacher. Oh no. Oh, okay. And I get three mana at the beginning of my main phase. And I'm gonna put this coin here to remind myself. Nice. I am just so tired of my stuff not going through. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Josh Lee Kwai comes through. Counterspell. I'm salty. Very salty. So one good thing that comes out of this is that Cassius's salt is pointed right at Josh. So maybe I can stay under the radar for the next few turns. Hopefully I can catch back up. All right, and then no more effects. Mm -mm. All right, I'm going to untap for my turn right now. And when I do that, I will remove this coin to remind me that I get to draw off Phyrexian Arena and take one damage going to 34. But then- <laughs> There's more. I get to draw for turn Yay! for the first time this game. I would like to thank Josh Lee Kwai for this moment. We drew not one, but two cards this turn. And it feels great. So I'm gonna start off by tapping two, and I'm going to play a Mind Stone. Sweet. Rhystic Study Trigger? I'm not paying. Okay, I will draw. And then I'm going to activate Chandra, giving myself two red mana. Cool. And I will cast Torolf, God of Fury. I have the power! Wow. Oh. Fury. Torolf is perfect for Ashlyn's commander because every time she throws damage around, if there's extra, well, she can just assign that to a new creature. If this card sticks around, none of our creatures are ever gonna be able to survive. Okay, cool. Um, Rhystic Study Trigger, though? You know what? I'm feeling pretty generous because I got to draw two cards this turn, so go ahead, Josh. Wow. All right, we'll draw. And that's my turn. Go ahead, Jimmy. Okay, I'm gonna untap, and then I'm going to pay one, and on my upkeep, use Sensei's Divining Top. Look at the top three cards in my library. Cool. I'll put it on top like that. I will draw a card for turn. Then I will play a Bloodstained Mire as my land for turn. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the turn. Fidel can worry. Yeah, I'm pretty jealous of Jimmy here. He gets to just do nothing on his turn and pass because he can respond at instant speed. He's got Vidal Canori. Untap, and I will draw. And then I'll activate Tassigrim. Okay, so mill two cards. And then Jimmy, you get to pick a non-land card from my graveyard that I will put back into my hand. Okay, there are not a lot of great choices to choose from here. Cassius' graveyard is filled with incredibly powerful cards, but I've got an idea. What if I get on his good side and give him back what he wants? Well, Cash, what do you want? You know, I'm, I'm gonna give you a favor here and just, and let you choose, you know? What? I'm in the spirit, because you're, oh I, my gosh. you know, for future whatever. Yeah, just don't yeah. murder oh, me immediately. For future yeah, yeah. whatevers. Yeah, yeah. I would love a whole breacher. Okay, you get whole breacher back. <laughs> There you, go. you know you could just cast Omniscience with the treasures, right? Yeah. Okay, I'm very appreciative. So Jimmy just gives him the whole Breacher. I don't get it. I thought Cassius was the threat. How does this help anyone? I will pass my turn. Okay, on end step, I will activate Joyra. <gasps> He's doing it. I will suspend Jingataxius. Oh. With four suspend counters on it. So I finally suspend a card with my commander. It's not the best. First of all, it's gonna take a while to come out onto the battlefield. And also, I know that Cassius has Hole Breacher. So I'm not even gonna draw the seven cards. Listen, if it does come onto the battlefield, it's gonna probably be good for me, but I'm not as excited as I normally would be. And then I will go to my untap, and I will remove a suspend counter from Jinkitaxis. So it's now three turns away. And I will draw my card for the turn. And then on my main phase, my mana drain mana will come into my mana pool. So I have three colorless mana floating. All right, with the three mana floating, I'm gonna play Mirage Mirror. 
Oh. Love that card. So this card, obviously really good. We've seen it do a lot of cool stuff on the show. It's very versatile, depending on what my opponents play. And we know for a fact that Cassius has omniscience. If he ever plays it, I can make a copy of it. Which, you know, I think would probably be good for me. Yeah, and then I will pass the turn. End of your turn, I will play Culligan's Command. Choosing two. I'm going to return target creature card from my graveyard to my hand. I'm gonna target Caravac and I'm going to blow up Jimmy's Vidalcan Ori. Sweet. So this is really simple. I wanna get rid of Jimmy's Vidalcan Ori so we don't have to worry about anticipating his threats and I get my commander back so I can get things back on track. That's gonna trigger Rhystic Study, do you wanna pay? No, I can't pay. Okay. Oh, so this is what she was planning when she put her commander in the graveyard. I just didn't think it was gonna affect me so much, but Vidalcan Orrery lets me turn all of my cards into flash speed. So let's see exactly what we can pull off here. Okay, in response, I am going to flash out Underworld Breach. This card is fantastic because it lets you reuse cards from your graveyard, which is an effect that red doesn't really have much of. It only sticks around for one turn, but that's all I need to get it going. Oh, this is a really good card. So Jimmy is now gonna have access to the stuff in his graveyard. What's in there from before? And then I'm going to escape Jessica's will from my graveyard. I'm gonna exile three cards. and Rhystic Study triggers. I will not pay for it. All right, I will draw off Rhystic Study. Okay, so how many cards do you have in your hand? Nine. So I'm gonna add nine red man to my mana pool. In a weird turn of events, Jimmy actually wants me to draw cards. I need more mana and value, and this is one of the best cards of the game. Unfortunately, my commander isn't on the battlefield, so I can only choose one of the two modes. Jessica's Will with Underworld Breach. It's a pretty scary combination because it creates mana, and if Jimmy has enough cards in his graveyard, he can kind of just keep playing the Jessica's Will over and over again. I think we're lucky here. He doesn't have a lot of stuff in his bin at the moment, but if he can mill somehow, this could go bad really quick. With two of that mana, I'm gonna remove a brick counter from Sense of Pyramid and draw a card. Sure. And then I'm gonna crack my Bloodstained Mire, and I'm gonna get a Mountain and put it onto the battlefield untapped. And I'm gonna lose one life going to 35. It's really important that I sequence this right. I have a lot of cards in my hand, cards in my graveyard, and a bunch of mana. I'm trying to generate as much value as I can to put myself in a winning position. So tap that mound and I will top, and I'll put that there. Okay. And then I'm gonna activate top, and then I'm gonna draw my card. Must have been a good one. And then I'm gonna put Sensei's Divine Top on the top of my library. I'm gonna spend three of my floating red mana and one green on the table to recast my commander, Rada, heir to Keld. All right, who's next? Wow. Okay, on that cast, Rhystic Study triggers? Uh, you can draw a card. Okay, I'll draw. With three of the red floating, I'm going to recast Jessica's Will with Underworld Breach, exiling three cards from my graveyard. Whew. I'm gonna target you, Josh. Okay, when you cast that, Rhystic Study. You can draw for it. Okay. What's better than one cast of Jessica's Will in the turn? How about two, and the second time I have my commander out? So I get cards and extra mana. And Josh's hand, oh, it's looking healthy. I think what I'm gonna do in response okay. is brainstorm. Okay. All right, so this is the second time Jimmy's casting Jessica's Will and I'm getting pretty scared. If he can find something that allows him to repeatedly put cards into his graveyard, he can basically cast Jessica's Will over and over again. And he'll end up with a ton of mana and access to basically his entire deck. So this could be game ending right now. I need to stop him. Hopefully I can find something good off this brainstorm. All right, so I'm gonna draw three cards. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh oh. So I'm going to flash out Hole Breacher. Your loss, my gain. Okay. So I had held off on casting the Hole Breacher because I really wanted to let Ashlyn get some card draw at this point, but I can't pass up on three more treasure. Plus I'm still mad at Josh. So the stack's getting pretty complicated here. We've got Jimmy's Jessica's Will, my Brainstorm, and then Hole Breacher. Technically Brainstorm has you draw three cards, but I'm not gonna do that if Hole Breacher's out. He'll just make three treasure instead. I think I have to let the Hole Breacher hit the battlefield so that I can kill it before my Brainstorm resolves. However, I still want to stop Jimmy from having the Jessica's Will happen. I think I have a card that kind of does both. Okay, so first things first, Rhystic Study on cast. No, I will not pay. Draw your card. Okay, I will draw. Hole Breacher, I have no effects. It resolves. All right, so Brainstorm's still in the stack. I'm gonna tap two blue. I'm gonna Narset's Reversal, the Jessica's Will. 
That's cool. Okay, so Josh is just trying to steal my spell over here. And I totally get it. The value is insane, and it's the second time I've casted this turn. But I got something for you. Okay, I'm gonna use my one red floating and my last mana here to cast Burnout. Targeting the Narciss Reversal. Come on. So I'm looking at my board here. I don't have a ton of mana left. I don't want to make any more moves because now I'm going to just be shields down during everybody else's turn this rotation. But I also feel like I have so many resources tied up into this intricate stack interaction that I'm kind of committed. I think I have to go all in and try and make sure my plan goes through. Risk uh, with trigger, and I can't pay for it. Okay, so I would go to draw a card, but Whole Breacher's on the battlefield, so Cash just gets a treasure. <laughs> Uh-oh. I don't know if Josh realizes this, but that Rustic study is a pay ability. He doesn't have to give him treasures. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, it's a maze. I didn't even know that before. Oh, Rustic you may draw. Oh, uh, probably should have realized that earlier, but... Ha-ha! <laughs> That's the big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so Cassius makes a treasure here off my Rustic study trigger, and I realized just after the fact that it's a May ability. I could say I'm not gonna draw the card and then he doesn't get the treasure. So definitely a play mistake on my part here. And Josh is up to speed. In response to the burnout, I'm gonna pay a blue and a colorless, taking one from the talisman, and I'm gonna flash out Snapcaster Mage. Let's try that again. Okay. So I'm gonna target my mana drain. Oh, wow. Josh is what we like to call committed at this point. We're all just investing so many resources out of our hands. This is a bit of a bummer, and I was not planning on this to happen. So I'm really sad. My spell is not going to resolve. Then I'm going to tap two mana because I'm low on blue. And I'm going to turn my Mirage Mirror into a volcanic island. That's bad. And then I'm going to tap two blue, and I'm going to cast the mana drain targeting the burnout. So this is gonna counter Jimmy's counter, which was countering my Narset's reversal, which was stealing Jimmy's Jessica's will. So hopefully I'll get the Jessica's will now, and I can use that mana to kill the whole breacher before the brainstorm resolves. Hopefully everyone's able to keep up with that. The stack's getting pretty crazy at this point. Josh is gonna get a Jessica's will, not Jimmy. So I am getting a little bit concerned, but... The treasure here from the Rhystic Study trigger opens me up to be able to actually affect what's going on here. In response, yep. I will Fluster Storm. Yep. Wow, and uh, Storm Count is like 10 right now. It's very high. You can actually counter everything if you want to. I'm not gonna look at you with whatever I do. I'll give you as maybe a turn of immunity, two turns. Give you two turns. Two turns, two turns sounds good. So I can actually counter Jimmy's Jessica's will here, but he gave me the whole Breacher earlier. I think it's better to make a friend in this situation than an enemy. Okay, Rhystic Study? I don't wanna pay. In this case, I will not draw the card okay. so that you don't whole Breacher. I will target the mana drain. You definitely have the storm count where I'm not going to have the mana to pay for it. Uh, talk about getting punished for a misplay. Should not have given Cassius that treasure. I didn't have to. So now all of my stuff is null and Jimmy's Jessica's will is going to resolve. My brainstorm's going to run into the whole breacher and I just got to watch it happen. Okay, so let's run it down then. Mm. Fluster storm counters the mana drain. Which means burnout counters the Narset's reversal. Which means Jimmy's Jessica's will resolve. It will. But before it does, we need to resolve the brainstorm that's still on the stack. So I would go to draw three cards, but I can't. So Whole Breacher makes three treasure for you. But I still have to put two cards from my hand on top of my library. So I'm gonna put these two cards back. Sweet. That didn't go very well. They're spending so many cards on this Jessica's will. What if it's a total debt? But I'm kind of happy to see all these counter spells go, not gonna lie. Okay, and now Jessica's will. Josh, how many cards do you have in your hand? Seven cards now. So you have seven red. I have seven red. I'm going to exile the top three cards in my library. One, two, and three. Two of them are lands, one of them is the top. I'll pay one mana to cast the Sensei's Divining Top. And then I am going to pay one of the red to go to five red floating to use the top. Put it on top like that. I knew what I was gonna get here, but this still sucks. I can't play the lands, the top is whatever. I, I was really hoping for a better way to use my mana. So I'm just gonna try and set myself up to recover in later turns. Use as much mana as I can and play out all my spells. Okay, I have five red mana. I'm gonna spend two of it on a Gruel Signet. Okay. I'm gonna spend one of those mana to tap the Gruel Signet so I have four mana. I'm gonna cast Tectonic Reformation. 
And that's it. You don't have a land to cycle right now? I don't, unfortunately. And that is literally it. Uh, no, we got one more spell in the stack. We've totally forgot what's going on. Command, this. right? Yeah, Culligan's okay. Command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why she's been so patient. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, so Culligan's Command is now the only thing on the stack. What's it targeting again? Vidalcanori and Kervek, my commander from the graveyard. Okay, Vidalcanori gets blown up. And I get Kervek. Yay! Yep. Jeez. I honestly forgot that this all started from Ashlyn's Culligan's command. So at the end of it, I guess, Jimmy just loses a Vidalcanori. And I get a bunch of treasures, which means for sure next turn I can cast Omniscience. Okay, yeah, it's your turn, Ash. <laughs> okay. I can't believe that was my end step. <laughs> So the turn finally ends, and I'm just feeling awful. I used a million resources basically to do nothing. My only hope is that Ashlyn and Jimmy can slow caches down enough that I get another turn and maybe can get back on my feet here. I'm going to untap and finally make it to my turn. During my upkeep, Frexian Arena will trigger. And so will Burnout. So we're each supposed to draw a card currently. But because Hull Breacher is out, neither of us will, and Cassius will get two treasure tokens. Nice. And then I'm going to take a damage from Phyrexian Arena. Aww. And now I'll go to my draw step and draw my one card for turn. Okay. I'm gonna activate Chandra using her second ability to give myself two red mana. And I'll play my commander, Kervek the Merciless. Not bad. We know everyone is trying to cast really big things and Cassius' Omniscience, what well, if it does 10 damage to him because of Karavek? I think that's a good thing for everyone at the table. I'm really hoping that Ashlyn changes the terms of her deal here. I think she needs to be back in the driver's seat. As long as Cassius doesn't become a danger to me, he can send that damage wherever he wants. Hopefully this is a beginning to an end and we can start bringing this game to a close. Mystic study trigger, do you want to pay? No, I'm good. I'm going to decline to draw the card. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm pretty I've sure. I've never seen so many declines before. <laughs> it's making me sad. Yeah, this sucks because my Rhystic Study is totally getting shut down. Until someone gets rid of that Hole Breacher, I'm just gonna have to keep declining to draw the card so Cassius doesn't get any more treasure. Feels bad. All right, and then I will move to combat. I'm going to swing Toroth at you, Jimmy. Okay, I'm not gonna block, so I'm gonna take five damage and go to 30 life. Great. And then since you took damage, I'm going to pay one and play Light Up the Stage for its spectacle cost. Oh. Oh, nice. So I'm gonna exile the top two cards in my library and until the end of my next turn, I can play them. Okay. Ooh, and I got Ether Flash and Vile Smasher. Ether Flash? Vile Smasher? <laughs> well, I can't play either of those right now, so uh, go ahead, Jimmy. Okay, on your end step, Underworld Breach is going to get sacrificed. And I'll go to my turn. Going to untap, upkeep, draw my card for the turn. Okay, Cassius, how many cards do you have in your hand? I've got three cards in hand. True, and one of them One of them's omniscience. omniscience. Okay, Cassius has enough mana to play Omniscience, so he's almost certainly gonna do that on his turn. However, he only has two other cards in his hand, so I'm hoping he's not gonna just be able to win the game with that. So I'm gonna take a gamble here. I'm gonna reload my hand, hope I can weather the storm, and I'll be in great shape if it gets back to me. All right, um, I'm gonna go to combat. Well, Ashlyn, I'm gonna swing at you with Rada. That has an attack trigger, so I'm gonna gain two red mana, and I'm gonna tap everything. Whoa. So two, okay. four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 total mana, and I'm gonna cast Commune with Lava for 10. Whoa, jeez. Normally I wouldn't cast this instant on my turn, but looking around the board, everyone's shields are fully down. They're tapped out, the counter wars are over. I think my best chance to resolve this is right now. Uh, so there's two cast triggers, I have a stick study. And I have a Karavek trigger. Okay, so the Karavek's actually going to resolve first. Who do you want to point that 12 damage at that is not me or my permanence? Anyone that's not me or my permanence. Okay, I will take the 12 damage and I will target Tassiger. Okay, Tassiger dies. And I will put him in the command zone. Oof. Since there was seven excess damage dealt to Tassiger, Torolf's gonna trigger. And I'm gonna point that seven damage at Joyra. Yep, Joyra will die. And she will go to the command zone. And there's five excess damage there, so Torolf will trigger again. And I'll point that damage at Snapcaster. Okay, Snappy dies, so there's four excess damage left. Yep, trigger Torolf again, and that four excess damage is going to go at Rada. Oh, sad. Rada's gonna die and go to the command zone. All right, so now there's two excess damage left. This is crazy. And I'm gonna actually send that right at you, Josh. 
Yep, I will take two and go to 30. Okay, this is great. Chorov is going to work clearing out that board and making sure none of that damage is going to waste. So this Karavek and Torov interaction, pretty cool here. She does leave the whole Breacher on the battlefield though. I know she's keeping it there because it's stopping my Rhystic study and she's scared of Jin Gitaxius, but Cassius is about to cast Omniscience next turn. And I don't care what the position of the board state is. If a player is gonna get Omniscience out, all bets are off. I would try and hamper them in any way I could. Okay, Rhystic Study Trigger resolves. Whole Breacher's on the battlefield, so I'm gonna choose not to draw because I don't want you to make a treasure. Okay, uh, does that mean that my Kamin with Lava now is going to resolve? Yes. Oh, right, yeah, that was still in the stack. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> All right, I'll reveal the top 10 cards in my library, and they are... Wow. A lot of stuff in there. That is a big commune with lava. That is a lot of cards Jimmy's gonna have access to on his next turn. It makes me a little nervous though. I wish he had some mana open because if Jimmy had any ability to interact, well, now he's tapped out and he's not gonna be able to do it. So we're really just banking on the fact that Cassius' two cards that he's got left in hand are not that bad. I'll play that Skarg as my land for turn. Cool, cool. And that's all I can actually do. So I'm gonna pass turn. All right, I will untap. So this couldn't have gone better for me. I'm untapping for my turn. All my opponents are, are tapped out and I'm about to play one of the most powerful spells in the game. And I'll draw for turn. Is it time? Go Coco Nuts, go Omniscience. First, I'm going to delve for five. Yep. And play Tassiger. for the remaining mana. Okay. Because of commander tax, yep. Because it's commander tax. Careback will trigger. Cash, I'm gonna let you choose where the damage will go. You will target the damage at Josh. All right, I'll go to 24. Ooh. And then I will play Omniscience. Here we Ooh. go. Yep, big surprise. I'll sacrifice all five of my treasures to do that. This is the moment we have all been waiting for. We know Cassius has had this in his hand for a while now, and here's hoping he can't just win the game on the spot because of it. We just have to hope that the last couple of cards in his hand, maybe they don't do anything, don't draw him any more cards, definitely. If they're just like a couple of big creatures or big effects, we might be able to withstand it. Uh, that's also gonna trigger Caravac. And you can point that damage wherever you want as well. Jimmy, I will point that <laughs> damage at you. Okay. Karavek, come on in. Yep. Dealing me 10, I'm gonna go to 20. Then I will cast Thassa's Oracle. Hmm. Okay. Normally this card is a win condition in a lot of competitive decks, and he's just playing it for the card selection. That's gotta be a good sign for us, right? We might actually get another turn. And my commander will trigger. For two. I'll let you point that too. Josh, two damage your way. Yep, I got a 22. So I'll look at the top six cards. I'll choose one and put that on top of my library and put the rest on the bottom. Now I will cast Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Thassa's Oracle. Uh-oh. That's bad. Ah, crap. Okay, well, if we were hoping that he doesn't have anything good in his hand, he's about to go find the best card in his library and put it into his hand. So that hope is now gone. I don't know how he's gonna do it exactly, but I think there's a good chance we're all dead now. Okay, all bets are off. I can no longer allow anyone else to control where my damage is going with my commander. Okay. It looks like you are moving towards a win right now. Uh, so I think at this point, I'm gonna take control of where damage is getting pointed again. Seems like a good I mean, idea. it's your card, yeah. it's your choice. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, Rack will trigger, and I'm gonna point the damage at you. So I'll take two, go to 25, and now I will search my library. At this point, Ashlyn starts pointing the Karavik damage my way. So now I've gotta think that every spell I cast could potentially kill me, so I've gotta find a way to get rid of this Karavik. So I'm gonna search for a card and put it in my hand, and then I will cast that card for free, Eternal Witness. I will <laughs> target the Time Twister. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh man, we are back to right where we started. We're gonna wheel and even if Cassius can't win right now, we're gonna lose our hands. Cassius is gonna get a billion new treasures and he's gonna have all the answers in the world to stop us. This sucks. Are we stuck in a time loop or something? I feel like I've seen this one before. I've gotta do something about this. Okay, that's gonna trigger Karabek, and I'm gonna take that three damage, and I'm going to target the whole Breacher, because I, I wanna draw cards. Okay, so whole Breacher dies. Come on. Okay, so that was three damage, and so there's one damage left over, so that's gonna trigger Toral. And I'm gonna take that one damage, and I'm gonna have to send it at you, Cass, yeah, sorry. cool. I will go to 24. Okay, well, better late than never, Ashlyn finally decides to kill Whole Breacher. 
This gives us a little ray of hope because we are gonna draw cards when he casts a time twister and I can draw cards off of Ristic Study. Maybe I can find one of my free counter spells, interact at the right moment here, and maybe we can survive. All right, time twister is back in your hand. Yeah, oh, I will cast time twister. <laughs> All right. Okay, so there's two triggers. We've been ignoring Ristic Study, but with hold retrigger <laughs> on it does matter. Right. So Ristic Study trigger, Caravec. Caravec's going to resolve first. Three damage. I'm going to send it at your face. Cash. I will go to 21. And then you don't have the mana, so I'm assuming I draw. You will draw. Okay. Draw. So. And then Time Twister resolves. Time Twister resolves. Um, yeah, we all shuffle our graveyard shuffle in hands. Graveyard in hands. And then we draw seven cards. Okay. All right. Now that Hull Breacher is gone, maybe someone will get some sort of answer. A counter spell or just anything to help us. So I look at the seven cards from Time Twister and <sighs> no free counter spell. So we have two things we can hope for here. Either Cash casts enough spells that Karavek damage hampers him or kills him, or he casts enough spells and I draw enough off Ristic Study that I find one of my free counters and I can stop whatever the game winning play is. They're both long shots, but at least it's not over quite yet. All right, my first play will be uh, Beast Within. Targeting Caravac. Oh, that's bad. That'll trigger Caravac. Caravac's gonna take that three damage and send it right to your face. Ooh, face me. I will go to 18. Caravac will go to Command Zone. Ugh. Okay, well, I get a 3 3 beast token. And that guy looks familiar. All right, so my commander's gone. I have no way to deal damage to him, and I'm tapped out, so there goes that plan. Ristic Study trigger? No, I will not pay. Okay. And we'll draw. And then, land for turn. Now that Caravac's gone, I'm free to play my spells, so I can go ahead and try to win the game. All right, here we go. I'm gonna cast Worldly Tutor. Oh boy. And search my library for a creature card. Okay, there's no way he's not gonna go search for a combo piece right now. This has got to be it. We're in an awful position. And then another Ristic Study trigger? I will pay for that one. So I'll search my library for a creature card, and I will find Palancron. Oh. And I will put that on top of my library. Uh, with Omniscience? I've, uh, uh, yeah, I've heard this song before. Uh -huh. Seems good. Yeah. Oh no. This card is the second piece to an infinite combo with Omniscience. And once he's able to draw it, he's gonna be able to essentially give himself infinite mana. This is super, super duper bad. All right, uh, okay, so next I will play Teferi, Master of Time. Oh, that's how you're gonna drive. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah, oh, uh, Ristic Study Trigger? I will not pay. Okay. I will plus one and take him up to four loyalty counters. And I will draw a card and discard Opposition Agent. And then I will cast Palancron. Yikes! Uh oh. Ristic Study Trigger. I will not pay. You will Cash, draw a card. Draw. So this whole time, Cash is casting spells. I'm drawing cards off Ristic Study. Ah, that's not the counter spell I need. And I draw a card off Ristic Study, and ah, it's not the counter spell I need. I have no ability to interact with my opponents. Cash is about to get a lot of mana, so it's pretty much going to be game over for us. So Palancrom, when you cast it for free, it is going to create infinite mana. I'm going to play it. I untap seven lands. I tap seven lands. <laughs> Pay four, bounce it to my hand, and I'll have three extra mana. Rinse and repeat, infinite mana. On ETB, Palancron will untap seven of my lands. I can bounce him for four mana and then play him for free. So I'm gonna play it mm, maybe 10, 20,000 times. That might <laughs> probably be enough. What do you think? Probably. Yeah, we're willing to concede you have as much mana as you want. So right. you have a, a bajillion mana floating. A bajillion mana, and that will actually allow me to pay for all those Ristic Study triggers. Ah. Uh, uh, yep. So you pay for Ristic Study every time you do anything? Else? Every single time. You okay. will not be drawing any cards off of that. So I've got infinite mana. I can pay for all of these Ristic Study triggers, and if Josh was gonna counter, or if he had a counter at this point, he would have already used it. So I think I'm gonna win. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna activate Tassiker, which mills the top two cards into my graveyard. And then one of you gets to choose a card and put it back into my hand. But it doesn't matter because I have infinite mana, so I'm gonna activate it infinite times. <laughs> wow. So the way this works is he just activates Tassiker a million times. That mills his entire library into his graveyard. And every time he does that, we have to give him one non-land card back to his hand. Well, there's not a million cards in his deck, right? So he just ends up with it all back into his hand. Oh yeah, we're dead. We're definitely dead. So I end up with a 
couple of cards in my hand right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know we're dead, but I guess the question is what's gonna kill us? Okay, so I will play Jace, Wilder of Mysteries. Clear your mind. Uh, yep. So I will uptick him to five loyalty and mill two and draw a card. Oh wait, I can't. And normally that would make me lose the game. But because of Jace's ability, I actually win the game. Wow. wow. Nice. Nice. So I guess I died to an infinite loop. Whoa. Oh no, make it stop. Ah. Oh, never stop. Ah. Good game, good game. Good game, good, good game, game, good game, everybody. All the punches. Then I use Jace, Wilder of Mysteries, to win the game. My W, baby. Let's go. This game was so much fun to play. Sometimes you really just need to get together and release the most powerful cards in your collection and see what happens. I love top tier magic because um, naturally I'm just a, a highly competitive person. One of the fun things about playing with people who are, are really good at the game is that you get these really crazy intricate stacks and so um, you get a lot of really fun interactions. I really like the look and feel of Time Spiral Remastered. It's celebrating one of the classic blocks in magic's history. Plus they have those really cool modern cards, but with the old style border, it just has so much warm, fuzzy, nostalgic feeling. Wow, what a game, what an ending, what a twist. Hope you had a great time watching it, everyone. Is that a joke? <laughs> yeah, spiral, twist, get it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you made it to the end of the episode. Quite a game. A combo win on game night. It's not something yeah. you see all the time. K.O. across the table. Of course, it's from Cassius. Yeah, it's like he just did this, bop, and just got both of us at the same time. I that do not nuts. want him doing that to me. Have you seen his arms? No, I don't want him doing that to me at all. <laughs> and in fact, Cassius, his love of magic has expanded. He actually started his own card store recently, so it was really great to have him on and to talk to him about all of that. So always great to see him there. And of course, to get beaten by him as well. <sighs> Yeah, if you want to check out his card store, it's called Cash Cards Unlimited. We'll have the links in the show notes. Also, we want to shout out uh, our sponsor, Ultra Pro, yes. who provides all the cool accoutrement that adorns the battlefield on Game Night's Extra Turns, all of our content. Ultra Pro really is the best way to protect all of your cards and game pieces. They make the products that Jimmy and I personally trust our own collections to. Pro glossy clip sleeves, sat towers, mythic collection, deck boxes, awesome play mats. Ultra Pro, whatever you need, they've got it. Yeah, and every single new set that comes out, they've got the play mats and the art and the sleeves that match that. So if you're building a new deck or just love the art, it's the perfect place to go. Ultra Pro also, of course, gives us tons of stuff to give away to you so that we can prove to you just how great that product is. And here's how you can enter to win. On Twitter, all you have to do is tweet out a link to this very episode and use the hashtag Game Nights. That's nights with a K. And that's all you have to do to enter there. On Facebook, find our Facebook page. You'll see the post that is sharing this episode. Go into the comments of that post. Tag a friend, maybe more friends that you think would enjoy the episode. And that's how you will enter there. And finally, on Instagram, all you have to do is post something related to Magic the Gathering, use the hashtag Game Nights. That's how we'll be able to track it. And of course, you only have one week from the release date of this episode to enter. At that point, no more entries. We're going to declare the winners and we're going to send tons of cool swag, including stuff like the signed playmats that we use on this episode. So some really neat stuff. Yeah, if you want uh, the playmats we used on the episode signed by people like Jimmy Wong and Cassius Marsh. And Josh Lee Kwai and make, Ashlyn Rose. Make sure to enter. <laughs> they want cash, let's be yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do too. <laughs> I'm entering this week all three ways. <laughs> yeah, be sure to enter again one week from the release of the episode is the deadline. Very exciting stuff. Wow. Yeah, well, everybody, we hope you enjoyed this episode. We'll be seeing you very soon with more game nights because Strixhaven is coming up. So uh, mm -hmm. make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you get notified when the new episodes come out. Yeah, Commander Decks Ahoy. We got tons of stuff this year. Magic is just exploding in every single way possible. And we're here to bring that content directly to you. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>